Lesson 43, the American legal system. Legal protections in the United States Constitution. Article 1, Section 9. Remember, Article 1, Section 8 lists the 17 delegated powers of Congress, as well as the necessary and proper clause, which gives Congress implied powers. That's Article 1, Section 8. Article 1, Section 9 uh, states what powers Congress does not have. With respect to our legal system, Congress cannot suspend writs of habeas corpus, pass bills of attainders, or ex post pass facto laws. Now, what are these? First, the writ of habeas corpus includes why a person is brought to court and being held. Congress cannot suspend writs of habeas corpus. In other words, you have a constitutional right to know why you are being held. You simply cannot just be held indefinitely without your will. In fact, the concept of habeas corpus was eventually written into our Sixth Amendment in our Constitution that says uh, you, as an accused, has the right to be informed of the nature of the charges against you. The right to be informed of the nature of the charges against you. A bill of attainder is a law that punishes a person accused of a crime without a trial or a fair hearing in court. Congress cannot pass bills of attainder. You need to have your day in court before you are punished. Uh, your, your, your time in court, a fair hearing. And an ex post facto law is a law that retroactively punishes a person after the fact. In other words, ex post facto, after the fact. Congress cannot pass ex post facto laws. In other words, at one point it was legal to do something, and then Congress passes a law that makes it illegal. That's okay, but Congress cannot then go back and punish you for what you were doing when it was legal. See, they cannot go back and punish you retroactively. Ex post facto law. Due process. We've talked a lot about that in our last couple lessons. Due process of law means that government may not take our lives, liberty, or property except according to the proper exercise of law. We call it due process. The Fifth Amendment says we have the rights of due process. And then the Fourteenth Amendment says that no state can deny any citizen due process of law. So, what does that mean? Well, that means that uh, when you are accused of a crime, there are certain processes that have to be followed. There are certain protocols that have to be adhered to uh, by law enforcement and the criminal justice system. Equal protection clause in the 14th Amendment requires governments to treat all people equally at all levels of government. The equal protection clause. The 14th Amendment, again, very famous, very significant, very consequential. States cannot deny their citizens due process nor equal protection. We are studying in previous uh, Supreme Court cases, 14th Amendment due process cases as applied to the Fourth Amendment, Map versus Ohio, as applied to the Fifth Amendment, Miranda versus Arizona, as applied to the Sixth Amendment, Gideon versus Wainwright. These are Fourteenth Amendment due process cases applied to the other amendments. Uh, in a later lesson, we will take a look at some of the more famous equal protection cases uh, that the Supreme Court has considered in its history. Rights of people accused of crimes. Protections against illegal search and seizure. We know that's Fourth Amendment, don't we? Fourth Amendment. So the right against self-incrimination, double jeopardy, indictment by grand jury, due process. We should know that's the Fifth Amendment. And then the right to have legal counsel and fair and public and open trials, the Sixth Amendment. 
punishment and bail, not to have excessive punishment, excessive bail, no cruel and unusual punishment. That, of course, is the Eighth Amendment. Our legal duties, we studied these the first week of class. You have a duty to serve on a jury, to testify in court when subpoenaed, to obey the laws, and certainly to cooperate with law enforcement. Well, that concludes Lesson 43.